A warm welcome to your Bucket List Today evening Sunday from Monday to my night. Travelers from close to a dozen Caribbean countries can take full advantage of a new travel bubble to Barbados, now in effect. The bubble allows fully vaccinated visitors from Grenada, Antigua and Barbuda, Dominica, Anguilla, Montserrat, Bonaire, St. Eustatius and Saba, St. Martin, Turks and Caicos, the Cayman Islands and Bermuda, who present a valid pre-flight negative PCR test, to be exempt from further quarantine or testing upon arrival here. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Kenneth George explained that the countries in the travel bubble have low COVID-19 positivity rates. He said the countries are under close watch and where the situation changes, they will be removed from the bubble. More than 2,000 Barbadians have so far received their first dose of the Sinopharm COVID-19 vaccine from China. Word of this from co-coordinator of the National COVID-19 Vaccination Campaign, Major David Clark. 15,000 persons are expected to benefit from the 30,000 doses of Sinopharm vaccines donated by the government of China last month. At the weekend, the Ministry of Health hosted open days for the first dose of the vaccine, and Major Clark told Barbados today there was a positive response from the public. He again appealed to citizens to get vaccinated, stressing it's for the good of the country. In today's COVID-19 update, 11 new positive cases, 5 females and 6 males, were diagnosed by the Best of Santos Public Health Laboratory from a total of 739 tests conducted on Sunday. There are currently 151 people in isolation. As a result, overall COVID-19 cases have moved to 4,269 cases. The viral illness has claimed 48 lives. The Public Health Lab has conducted 202,157 tests. The number of first doses administered under the National Vaccination Program is 98,206. Additionally, 73,427 persons have received second doses of the COVID-19 vaccines. This number represents 27.1% of the population. To news from the law courts, murder accused 33-year-old Brian O'Neill Brown of Eastbourne No. 1 St. Philip was today remanded to HMP Dodds when he appeared before Chief Magistrate Ian Weeks. Brown is charged with the murder of Janice Mitchell of First Avenue Chapman Lane St. Michael, who perished in the July 10 fire at her home. He's also charged with two counts of serious bodily harm to Kitcha Mitchell and her one-year-old daughter Haley Mitchell, who lived at the same residence. They remain in critical condition at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. Brown is also charged with arson. He is scheduled to reappear in court on August 16. Meanwhile, two men accused of last Friday's burglary at Savings Plus Supermarket were remanded to Dodds when they appeared in court today. Kadim Onan Vaughan, 26, from Literary Row, and Michael Lee Yearwood, 21, from 7th Avenue, New Orleans, both in St. Michael, are charged with entering the supermarket's Rock Dungdo outlet as trespassers on July 16 and stealing $1,436.85, a $55 cash pan, while armed with a gun and a cutlass. They will return to court on August 16. After years of tireless service to many of the island's homeless and undeserved citizens, Sharon Bellamy Thompson has been given the Citizen of the Year Award from Kiwanis International. The announcement was made on Monday by the first Barbadian governor in the club's history, Dolores Lewis, as she and the visiting Kiwani International President Michael Blackman and other members of the local Kiwanis Club joined Bellamy during her daily rounds in the city, distributing care packages to the homeless. For Bellamy, it's a top honor. But well, I'm so excited, overwhelmed, because I was doing this work for over 30 years, you know, and I wasn't looking for such a big recognition because God had given me this mantle and I decided to carry on as long as it tarries. Um, next step I'm looking forward to, and it's my passion, to have a building where I can host these people because where I'm doing it from my home, it has outgrown the home because I started with at least probably 20 people and now I'm at a hundred and something each day and uh, have no space to turn home. I have to pack them myself, prepare them, and the space is becoming limited. There's regional and international news after this short break.
Barbados Today, news you can trust. To regional news, Haitians are in line to get a new prime minister who is backed by the international community as early as Tuesday. More on this report from Reuters Television. Haiti's acting prime minister agreed to step down in the wake of the assassination of the country's president. In an interview with the Washington Post published on Monday, Claude Joseph said he would hand over power to Ariel Henry, a 71-year-old neurosurgeon. The late president Jovenel Moïse named Henri to the post of prime minister, but he had yet to be sworn in when gunmen stormed Moïse's home and killed him on July 7th. The announcement appears to end a power struggle in the Caribbean nation between Joseph and Henri. Joseph told the Washington Post that he and Henri had met privately over the past week. He added that he agreed to step down on Sunday, quote, for the good of the nation, and is willing to transfer power, quote, as quickly as possible. Moïse's assassination has pitched the already troubled nation into chaos. The murder comes amid a surge in gang violence that has displaced thousands of people and hampered economic activity in the poorest country in the Americas. En reunión con Joseph Félix Valle. A Colombian police chief said on Friday the assassination may have been ordered by a former Haitian Justice Ministry official. He cited a preliminary investigation that has implicated Haitian Americans and former Colombian soldiers. Martin Moïse, the assassinated president's widow, returned to Haiti on Saturday for his funeral after she was treated in a Miami hospital for injuries sustained during the attack. On the international front, the British government on Monday lifted pandemic restrictions on daily life in England, scrapping all social distancing in a step slammed by scientists and opposition parties as a dangerous leap into the unknown. The last of England's COVID restrictions have now been lifted, but as case numbers rise by more than 50,000 each day, the British Prime Minister is urging the public to remain vigilant. Please, 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 be cautious. Uh, go forward tomorrow into uh, the next step with uh, all the right prudence and respect for other people and the, uh, the risks that the disease continues to present. Boris Johnson is now self-isolating following contact with his health secretary, who's tested positive for COVID. Despite concerns that the country is reopening too hastily, he says it's better to lift restrictions now than in the autumn when children go back to school. From Monday, there are no longer any limits on the number of people who can meet or attend events. The one-metre social distancing rule is being removed and bars and restaurants are no longer restricted to table service. I'm, I'm excited to go out and have a good time. There will be no limitations. Experts say the impact of lifting restrictions won't be known for several weeks. Some are warning daily case numbers could reach 200,000 before the autumn. I think it's almost certain we'll get to a 1,000 hospitalizations today, uh, per day. It'll almost certainly get to 100,000 cases a day. The real question is, do we get to double that or even higher? With almost nine out of every 10 adults having now received at least one vaccine dose and with almost 70% of the population fully inoculated, medics believe that serious illness and deaths will be at lower levels than during earlier waves of infection. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.